in terms of preventing neonatal heart failure, the best thing is for the woman to be uninfected and to remain uninfected through pregnancy. The next best thing is to already have HSV2 and have had it for months because the antibodies you know, produced by the mom's immune system will basically protect the baby. Not 100% and some of those babies will still be infected but it's still a very, very uh, rare uh, event. Um, I think we're into an area, and I'm glad you raised it, where in my mind uh, there is an important role for blood testing that has, is not being met and I would like to see done with a much greater priority. And that's exactly the situation you apply where a woman who is pregnant has a partner who has or is believed to have genital herpes. You could even make the case about oral herpes simplex virus type 1 as well, because a lot of neonatal herpes is HSV1. Correct. Uh, and uh, so it's not, it's not only the, uh, the, the predominantly genital uh, virus. I think that knowing, I think that screening that woman to see if she is infected or not is potentially very valuable. If she is seropositive or ha has HSV2, like her husband does, you can reassure her that, that number one, the risk of actual transmission of the baby is very low and the obstetrician can be on the lookout for outbreaks near term that might, for safety, stimulate a cesarean section uh, or that sort of thing. If she is negative, you're asking what can be done? Well, clearly there are some situations where it would be very frustrating. A power-dependent relationship, uh, depending on social and economic circumstances where preventing sexual exposure of that woman as she approaches term may be very difficult. So Hunter, let me sort of present this scenario to you uh, where we have a, uh, a couple a, um, uh, where the, the, the husband, the, the male partner, has genital herpes, is positive for um, uh, herpes type 2, um, and, um, and his partner is, is, is negative. We know that. Um, they are in a committed relationship. Uh, they're thinking about having children uh, down the road. What, how do you see them sort of approaching this uh, uh, in terms of preventing uh, transmission to the, uh, to the female partner? It's an extremely important area. Neonatal herpes is perhaps the single most important complication of herpes simplex virus infections that we want to prevent, uh, at least in the genital herpes context. Uh, neonatal herpes can kill babies and, uh, and the survivors often have lifelong neurodevelopmental disabilities that can be devastating to the child and to the uh, family. So it's a very high priority. I think you first want to consider how do we get to the point you, you have just outlined where you know that the uh, woman is negative. That raises the question as to whether there is a role for blood testing in this scenario, and I think there is. I think it's an area where, although there are controversies around HSV blood testing and when and should it shouldn't be done, to me it's a no-brainer and should be done much more frequently than it currently is to test the female partners of infected men when those women are pregnant. Because I think if you know that woman is, in fact, already HSV2 infected, with or without symptoms, often without, that she's essentially protected. The chance her baby is going to be infected is very low, and the obstetrician can be on the lookout for outbreaks near term that might lead to a cesarean section to lower the risk further. Um, if the woman doesn't have it, some can ask, well, what good is that, and can you prevent transmission? The highest priority by far is to prevent new HSV infections of the genital tract in women during the last three months of pregnancy. That's where the neonatal herpes risk is, is very high. And I think there are steps that can be taken. Uh, sometimes it won't work. Some, I mean, I think a lot of couples would be happy to be told of the risk and that it would be wise for them to forego all sexual activity during the last three months of pregnancy. I think there are many couples and many pregnant women who would not be entirely unhappy with that advice. Uh, all, on the other hand, there are also couples in which that advice is simply not going to be heated. Maybe a power-dependent relationship and there may be all kinds of uh, things uh, that, that can get in the way of that. But I think it's a, I think it's a tactic that, can, that we should have the ability to advise about even if it's not 100%.